I've called this presentation, it's a numbers game, but it could quite easily have been called The More the Merrier, Come One, Come All, as I believe the number of typical people we encounter in our lives enhances our opportunities for relationships to develop. It's not just for people with disability, it's for everybody. The more people we know, the more people we relate to, the more people that know us, the more likely it is we're going to find those people we click with. Let's start at the very beginning. Once Todd and I decided to have a family, we have discovered we were quite good at it and produced three children in just under four years. When Jocelyn was born, we knew her life was going to be difficult, right from the start. We were having lots and lots of people telling us what we should be doing. At the same time, I was on a personal journey of searching. I devoured books, journals, went to conferences, asked incessant questions, accosted people about why it had to be different for my daughter. Because Daniel was only 16 months older than her. How come the expectations for him had to be so different to those for Joss? I decided that we were way too small for what faced us, because it was only Daniel and Jossie then as our children. We needed more allies, we had to make our own. Jocelyn's difficulties in her life, in relationships, are not just going to be about how the disability is within her, like her own personal experience of her impairment. She finds it difficult to speak, she's very impatient. There's all sorts of qualities that she has that are going to be a barrier from typical people actually forming a friendship with her. But on top of that, every single person she encounters carries with them centuries of baggage about who she is to them already, even though they've never met her. Once I did this learning, I decided, okay, friendships, relationships, that is the key. This is the long-term goal. This is, if you like, it became our compass, the measure. Everything we did from then on was measured about, is this going to increase relationships? Is this going to increase how people view her in a positive way? Families, like them or loathe them, they're with you for life, in most cases. And I, I have to say it, I believe it is so worthwhile spending the time with your immediate family to get them on the same page with you. A lot of us, I think, avoid it because it's very emotionally draining and painful bringing your family to the same place. It's hard work, but I can tell you, if you spend the time and you stick with the program to get them with you on that, and it, sometimes it takes years, it will come back to you in spades because they will then be talking to their friends and other relatives. They won't be undoing what you're doing behind your back all the time. And that's what happens. If they're not with you on it, they're undoing it, saying that you're mad and you're you know, in denial and on and on it goes. So spending that time, if you can, is really worthwhile. Now, just a little story. My mum's a very conservative woman and we live in a very conservative town. She moved house. Next door neighbours were both teachers and inquired as to where Jocelyn was educated. And she said, oh, she's at the local school in a regular class. Oh, yes, well, all my years of teaching, I've never seen it work. <laughs> well, Mum turned around and said, oh, look, that's all right. Live long enough next to me. You'll come round. <laughs> Huge leap in, in, you know, she's still not really there, but has travelled just an enormous distance in her thinking. We've also paid particular attention to the relationship between the children. And it's been very purposeful, our thinking. The attention we pay is not just as a collective, which it is, like, you know, you are brothers and sisters, but it's also the individual relationships within that. It's the relationship between Monica and Daniel, Jocelyn and Monica, Monica and Jocelyn, Jocelyn and Daniel. Those relationships we actually nurture actively and thoughtfully because, as I said, they're all they've got. And we have to make that as right as it can be. What we've come out with is a very, very close little family. All of this, though, has given Joss a strong foundation of self-worth and identity. And that's what she's taken out into the world with her. And really, the world is where the numbers come into play. But the foundation was at home first. We had to get home right, or as right as it could be. The next step, of course, is school. The kids have always been at school together. 
being in the regular class at the regular school and all together of course enhanced and embedded her again another layer in her belonging her acceptance and her identity with her brother and sister at the local school all of that catching the local bus with the local kids it's layer on layer on layer of who she is the scrutiny that she lived under before is really lifted and now she can just, you know, she's got time just to be a kid in high school and it's really been fabulous for her. They share stories at home at the dinner table, the teachers they love and the teachers they hate. Generally it's the same teachers. Jocelyn has developed wonderful relationships um, with her brother and sister's friends at school as well and she has her own friends. Little story, the bus does a route first, comes back, picks up again and then does another one. Josh usually goes on the first one as well just for the ride. This particular day, she missed it, so she thought she'd missed the bus. Got upset, in tears. One of Dan's friends on another bus saw Joss crying, text one of her friends. That friend went and got somebody else, who then went and got Daniel, and by then, you know, a whole circle of were already there supporting Jocelyn, just because of the network of friends. Because she's just not some kid with a disability or a Downs. She's Sweeney's sister. That's Jocelyn. She also has her own group of friends. She's got a small, intimate group of friends that she sits with all of the time, but also a large network of acquaintances and kids that she knows from class and things like that. A lot of people think big is bad. I actually think big is fabulous. By the time Joss leaves high school, she'll be there for six years, she will have encountered over 2,000 young people, probably over 150 adults, now that equals a massive opportunity for relationships to develop. I've explained to you how small our family is, so our neighbours and our friends are very, very important to us, vitally important. And we actively encourage those friendships. We are very neighbourly, but we've formed a few significant relationships that have been long term. We've facilitated birthday parties. One of the things we helped Josh, she got on the phone to a friend and said, you know, do you want to come over and play? And I had another aha uh -huh moment, 15, you know, nearly 16, come and play. Uh, no. So as soon as she got off the phone, I said to her, maybe you shouldn't say come and play anymore. How about you say, you know, uh, how about you come round or... And anyway, she rang another friend, got on the phone and said, oh, you know, so-and-so, hey, do you want to come round? Do you want to come and hang? I didn't tell her. <laughs> she knew all I need to do is give her the trigger. Do you want to come and hang, you know? do stuff. She even had the how you say it. So I just helped her a little bit just you know, remember this and she ran with it. Jocelyn's a very capable swimmer and she wasn't doing anything outside of school. So we decided that swimming would be good and swim club would be even better. So we approached the swim club. Unfortunately the swim club has a very strict policy that all swimmers with disabilities have to be in the segregated swim club section. If she joined that, it didn't fit the vision. It didn't, what would it do? It, it was against the stuff about her sense of belonging and her acceptance, where all the other kids are, all of that sort of stuff. I still wanted her to go swimming. So we just waited and I kept thinking. Rhiannon is in Daniel's year at school. Rhiannon's in year 11 and she has been a member of the swim club all of her school life and was now a junior instructor. So I got on the phone to Rhiannon's mum and said, hey, do you reckon Rhiannon would be interested in a part-time job? And she said, oh yeah, I suppose she might be. So I explained to Lynn, to Rhiannon's mum, said, look, we tried to get in a swim club, this is the story, you know how we think about that. She said, yeah, yeah. I explained to the mum that the idea would be to catch the school bus down straight from school to the pool do the training. It had like a supportive role for Jocelyn, not just a swimming instruction role. And I said to her, she might be challenged by people down at the pool. If there's just two girls on their own, people might say some, you know, pretty odd things to them. Do you think Rhiannon's up to that? She said, yeah, I think it'll be good. So it came into being. Jocelyn now can catch the bus downtown independently through this relationship. So she's developed independence as well as skills, as well as relationships through this. And she swims in the fast lane, which is, yes! <laughs> Some of the things in closing that I've found is friendship is a two-way street. Not a lot of people will embrace 
Jocelyn's friendship when she offers it. But she doesn't embrace everyone's friendship that offers it to her. Friendship cannot be purchased, it can't be brokered, and it can't be organised. Friendship's a gift that the individual gives to another individual, freely given. And it's accepted in the same spirit by the other person. Through all of these informal networks that Todd and I are both here, our children are at home on their own with no paid support at all. Many years ago we decided to put our energy into informal supports and that's what we've chosen to do. So all of these stories that I tell you about are just freely given ordinary typical relationships. And in closing, it's the layers of all Jocelyn's relationships that are so delicately interwoven, one on top of the other, that create a web of support providing her with personal security, acceptance, love and belonging that we so desperately wanted for her when she was a little baby. Our journey as a family is just under 16 years along, but with our compass, the distance covered already in the right direction, we believe, and increasing fellow travellers that are joining our journey along the way, we uh, feel that the horizon looks pretty good for fair sailing.